Now, the C peptide is is uh, a protein that is uh, that you can test. That's something that's very important that we've written about extensively. We talked about extensively, and you love talking about it. So, can you explain what is C peptide? Why is it important? Why should people care about it in the first place? And what information are they going to gain from testing their own C peptide values? So C peptide is produced in a one to one ratio with insulin. So when your body produces insulin and produces C peptide, they come together and then they break off. Insulin does what it needs to do. And C peptide basically floats around for an extended period of time, which makes it easier to test. So we are using C-peptide as a indicator of how much insulin your pancreas is able to produce. And this is critical information for people who are setting their expectation of what they're gonna accomplish when following the mastering diabetes method. So you'll hear us say repeatedly that pre-diabetes, type two diabetes can be reversed in a vast majority of cases. And that is dependent upon how much insulin is still being produced. So that's the whole purpose behind the Mastering Diabetes Method, which is to teach people how to maximize their insulin sensitivity. So the insulin that is either being endogenously produced inside your body works more efficiently, or the exogenous insulin that you are injecting also works more efficiently. So the C-peptide test is also very relevant for type 1.5 diabetes. And what's happening is more and more people are getting misdiagnosed. There are people who are being told they have type 2 diabetes when they really have type 1.5 diabetes. And in some cases, there are people being told that they have type 1 diabetes when maybe they're actually are more of a type 1.5, living with type 1.5 diabetes. So for the context of somebody living with prediabetes, in most cases, your pancreas has not become so exhausted, the condition has not progressed so far that you can pretty much eliminate that from your life. You're in full control, no question, all right? Type two diabetes, if you've had it for a long enough period of time, it's possible that your beta cells have gotten exhausted and you simply cannot produce enough insulin and we need to reestablish the goals that you're trying to accomplish. This is what we call insulin dependent type two diabetes. And that's totally okay if you're living with that, but you wanna know that, you wanna be empowered. So a CPAP test can easily be gotten from your doctor, or you can order it online from a website like requestatest.com, and it's usually somewhere between $39, $59. You can order it without a prescription, and you can simply walk into a Quest or a LabCorp, and you can get your test results. Now, I wanna just touch a little bit here on type 1.5 diabetes. So, People living with type 1.5 diabetes, what's happening in that case is it's essentially a slow onset version of type 1. So you're still able to manage your blood glucose kind of okay, but it's on the edge. And it's because we do not know why or exactly what's going on, but you likely have diabetes anti, you have at least one diabetes antibody, okay? So you have at least one diabetes antibody and your C-peptide level is compromised. That is indication of type 1.5 diabetes. Type 1, your C-peptide is below 0.5 and you have two antibodies, okay? So you can get this data, you can have a clear picture of what is going on, and then you can really manage your expectations. And I know we have seen several clients, I know you work with one in particular, Cyrus, where very low C-peptide, but even following the mastering diabetes method, to a T, really executing it properly, you can stay off insulin for, you know, we'll see, an extent, maybe an extended period of time, we're not sure. But I wanna bring this up because it goes back to some of Dr. Brunzel's research and this fear that when people eat carbohydrate-rich food, they're gonna need more insulin, that it's gonna make their pancreas work harder. And I know it's so counterintuitive because of what our culture has really sort of beaten into the diabetes community's head that no, carbohydrate-rich food raises your blood glucose, you require more insulin. It's simply, it's, it's not true. That when you do it properly, you lower the fat intake, you can become so insulin sensitive that in some cases, you may or may not need to go on insulin. But using small amounts of insulin is totally okay if you have to. So 
When you're living with type 1.5 diabetes, type 1, or insulin-dependent type 2 diabetes, insulin's not the enemy. We are simply trying to use or add on to what our pancreas is already producing to get to the an adequate amount that our pancreas would have normally produced before our C-peptide level was low, before we had the diabetes antibodies, before our insulin production was compromised. That's all we're trying to do. And so we also don't want people to fear the use of insulin, which you and I both use, Cyrus, and are quite grateful for that keep us alive and have very active, healthy lives. 100%. So that's actually very, very helpful to understand that because there's a lot of confusion in the world of diabetes about many topics, but one of them is insulin. And, and a lot of people like to vilify insulin, point a finger at insulin and say, insulin is bad for you, and that insulin causes insulin resistance, and that insulin is actually going to increase your risk for the development of prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. And again, like we said earlier, that those statements are, are can be true in certain situations, but require a little bit more nuanced communication. It's not about, it's not, insulin is not the enemy, it's excess insulin beyond your physiological needs that causes, that increases your risk for chronic disease.